What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi Shanks and Sneakers.com. So I've been covering this series called how to select an antidepressant or specifically how to select an SSRI or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Now I've been covering a few of them up to this point. I got two left to go. So look out for the video today, obviously, and then one on Wednesday to wrap up the series. So I'm going to cover the last two medications. And in this video, I'm going to go over fluvoxamine or Luvox, and this is perfect timing because somebody just asked me if I was going to be covering it, and here we are covering it for you. So, in the United States, Luvox is only approved for one condition. So there's only one thing that the FDA has determined that Luvox is good for, and that condition is obsessive compulsive disorder. So everything else you would do with Luvox or Fluvoxamine is off-label. Although, if you look at other countries, specifically in Europe, there are other disorders that they use this medication for. So fluvoxamine can also be used for depression, like all of the other SSRIs, and it can also be used for social anxiety disorder, and this is approvals in other countries outside of the United States. Now, the long and short of it for me is that I barely ever use this medication. And the next two videos are actually going to be more of how to not select these antidepressants and why I don't think they are the best options, more than, you know, why I would select them or use them. So my philosophy on fluvoxamine is that if somebody is on it already when they come to me for treatment and they're relatively stable on it and there's some other problem going on, then I will keep the medication or titrate it or work with it. If the person is not on the medication, then I barely ever start it. So it's not a medication that I generally go to. And I'm going to make two points about why that is. So the first point actually has to do with withdrawal syndrome or withdrawal symptoms again. So fluvoxamine has a short half-life. The half-life is somewhere between 9 hours and 28 hours, and that's relatively short in the world of antidepressants. And so it puts patients at high risk for withdrawal symptoms. Now, what are those withdrawal symptoms, you might be asking, or how, you know, what, what, to, what would I be looking out for? Well, there's a few things you look out for. Flu-like illness, insomnia, nausea, dizziness or vertigo, sensory disturbances, often known as brain zaps, and irritability. So that's what can happen with this medication if you miss a dose or multiple doses, or you suddenly decrease your dose rapidly, and or stop the medication abruptly. So the first reason I don't like fluvoxamine is because it has high risk for withdrawal symptoms. The second point has to do with another common theme that we've been covering in these videos, which is drug-drug interactions. So fluvoxamine, Luvox, it's a potent inhibitor of a bunch of cytochrome P450 enzymes. So it's a potent inhibitor of CYP1A2, 3A4, 3A5, and 2C19. So when you see this list, this is a big list. A lot of the other medications are inhibitors of maybe one or two of these uh, enzymes, not that many. So this, as you can see, this inhibits a lot of the CYP enzymes. And what does that result in? It results in significant interactions with other medications. Now you might be saying, Dr. Rossi, what medications am I going to have to watch out for? So the medications that could have increased levels, right, of the uh, of this medication. So when it's an inhibitor, it's going to increase other medications that are metabolized by that particular CYP450 enzyme. So the levels of clozapine, which is the best antipsychotic that we have, that is a medicate or dopamine blocking medication that we have. It's going to raise those levels. It could potentially raise clomipramine levels. So again, another medication used often in OCD. Alprazolam, also known as Xanax, Gilbasarin, or Melteon, Theophylline, and Warfarin. So even some of your medical medications can be significantly increased due to these inhibitions of the cytochrome P450 enzymes. So to wrap the video, what I'll say is I mostly stay away from this medication. I'm not a big fan of Luvox or Fluvoxamine. Yes, I, I will use it in certain cases where somebody is already on it and having success with it but often I just stay away from it for the above two reasons. And I usually don't start this in OCD because I don't think it's any better than any of the other potential options. 
And again, it has that risk for withdrawal as well as significant drug-drug interactions. So that's why I would stay away from fluvoxamine. I'm going to hold the video there. I got one more medication to cover in the next video. So drop your comments below. If you've had a good response to fluvoxamine, let's talk about it.